Books are great. You can learn so much from reading books, but you're never able to finish reading it to get any benefits out of it without falling asleep or losing interest. In the first episode of this new series titled Life-Changing Books in 5 Minutes, I will share with you what I've learned from this book in just 5 minutes. The process of every habit, be it good or bad, can be broken down into these 4 steps. Q, craving, response, and reward. I'll use an example of someone who has an habit of eating chocolate the moment he opens the fridge. The cue is the sight of the chocolate the moment he opens the fridge. This triggers the craving of eating that chocolate. To satisfy that craving, he elicits a response to take that chocolate and eat it. The result of that response is the reward of satisfaction. The next time that same person opens the fridge, the sight of the chocolate triggers the brain to predict the reward, and the whole habit cycle repeats. By understanding these four steps, you'll be able to understand why you have certain habits and how to break them if you're trying to. In this book, James Clear outlays four basic steps on how to create good habits. The first law, make it obvious. Create a habit scorecard. Write down all your habits so that you are aware of them. If you are aware of what bad habits you have, you can take action to read of them. If you are aware of what habits you are currently practicing, you can use strategies to build new ones, such as habit stacking, which is to do a new habit after a current habit that you are currently doing, such as doing 5 push-ups the moment you get up from your chair. The other way is to voice out your intentions as specifically as possible, with the time and location that you will be doing. For example, I'll go for a 5km run at 5pm at a park near my house. If you make it as specific as possible, chances of you actually doing it increases. Previously, we also talked about the 4 steps of every habit. The first step, Q, is what triggers a habit. If you want to make it easier for your habit to sink it, design your environment such that your cues are obvious. If you have a gym set up at home, chances of you exercising is much higher than not having one. The second law, make it attractive. If it's not attractive, it's completely normal to not want to do it. Implement the technique of temptation bundling, which is to pair an action that you want to do with something that you need to do. If you're having trouble sticking to the habit of exercising, pair it with something that you want to do, such as being able to watch your favorite Netflix show. You can watch your show in between sets or while you're walking on the treadmill. You can also reinforce yourself by telling yourself the benefits of executing that habit. You'll be healthier, fitter, and more attractive if you exercise. Voice out the benefits and try to make that habit as attractive as possible. The third law, make it easy. All the four laws are important, but I feel that this is the one law that really helped me to stick to my habits. We are all lazy, it's in our blood. Our primal ancestors by nature are lazy because it helps them to conserve energy where food is scarce. If you want to stick to a good habit, you have to make it as easy as possible. Decrease the number of steps between you and your good habits. If you have to travel home from work, shower, change out into your gym clothes, then travel out again to the gym, chances of you doing that every day is going to be much lower compared to if you just bring your gym clothes to work and head there straight after. Priming your environment makes it much easier to make decisions, such as having your own workout station at home. You don't have to contemplate whether you should head out to the gym during a rainy day, when you can just do it at home. Here's one more crucial thing that I've learned, which is to master the decisive moment. There are certain decisive moments before a habit that if you do it, chances of you not doing that habit is a lot lower. For me, the decisive moment of my habit of exercising is changing into my workout clothes. The moment I changed out into my workout clothes, it's easier for me to continue with the habit than to stop doing it. Find that decisive moment and you'll find it difficult to not do that habit. The fourth law, make it satisfying. If a habit is not satisfying, why would anyone do it? Give yourself a reward every time after you complete a habit. To me, the reward is the satisfaction that I did something productive for the day. But for you, it could be something much more tangible, such as rewarding yourself with a cool glass of water after an intense workout, or being able to watch your favorite Netflix drama after finishing your assignment. You can also use a habit tracker to track your habit streaks. It's satisfying to see your streak continue. But it's important to keep in mind that you shouldn't make the streak your identity. Otherwise, you'll face an identity crisis if your streak fails. It's okay to miss it once when life gets in the way, but you shouldn't miss twice. Atomic Habits by James Clear is a value-filled book. This video does not cover everything, and I actually contemplated whether I should make a longer video. It doesn't just teach us how to build good habits, but also how to read bad ones, which is the inversion of each of the four basic laws. I highly recommend that you get this book for yourself and read it to get the maximum value out of it. Hope that you enjoyed the first episode of this new series, and a like is always appreciated.